morning folks. This morning so is brought to us by Vanya Lane. This is from the uh, October Fest line. There's three of them. And this one here's name is uh, Pumpkin Smash. It's a tallow base soap. Has a scent description down below as well as a few links you might want to might be interested in checking out. That is what the soap looks like on the inside there. It comes in a uh, uh, two ounce form. In other words, you know, typically hers, uh, uh, Monica's soaps are four ounces, but in this particular line, they're two uh, two ounces a piece. There's three of them in there in that lineup. Got the uh, alum block this morning from Phoenix Artists Accoutrements, no rubber band. It's getting to get pretty small nowadays. And I got Humphrey's Witch Hazel that I have menthol and peppermint in, and also got the uh, matching aftershave. And this is how most of Monica's. Uh, aftershaves will come. In other words, they will come in a container. This one here is a four ounce one, plastic, running about ten dollars and you usually will have to shake it up. And it's not uh, alcohol based but it is a uh, witch hazel. So if you prefer that kind of lineup, uh, non-alcohol, this might be right up your alley. I've got it whipped up here in a, a uh, bowl here. It's so what it looks like, you know, the soap there in the container looks kind of a brown or a beige color, and that's what the soap looks like, even though the light might wash it out. I've got it whipped up here with a, uh, a brush from DS Cosmetics, if I can get turned around here. And it's a 26 millimeter, and that's a flat top knot. Works really nice in the bowl. It's one of the reasons why I like that flat top knot, but it just, it just sits really nice right up in the bowl. And, uh, yeah, whipped up really nice this morning. I have got more than enough lather here to, to work with. Shaver of the day. Like I say, you may want to check out the links down below. I included one from this one, this particular link. I've had more than one that was available to me. Uh, got one, by the way, of email. Then, of course, one through uh, uh, Sharpologist. But the uh, shaver of the day is uh, One Blade Core. This one here I've had for a while, back when it first came out. Um, this particular blade, this will be its third shave. We'll see how that works because uh, that's about as far as I go with this particular blade. It's a feather blade. Uh, this particular kind of blade, uh, usually that third shave is uh, a little tuggy. <laughs> At least for me, it is. Uh, I were to put a hot towel to the face this morning. Pre-shave oil is uh, still, uh, I've got a little bit left here, left in my container. But I have, uh, my luck with uh, that particular blade, which is, it's a single edge blade that's uh, spineless. I think I forgot to bring in, yeah, I'm pretty sure that I had the box out earlier. <laughs> I must have put it back up that the blades come in. Yeah, I've got a link down below where you can find them at Maggard's. Uh, they come in a box of 10. They're spineless, single-edge blades. And at Maggard's, you can get 10 of them for about 7 bucks, which is a pretty good price in comparison to other places that I have seen them at where usually they're wanting a wee bit more. But uh, at any rate, the uh, email and uh, sharpologist that I was referring to that link that I've got down below, you can pick up the uh, one blade core. It'll come in the original box with uh, 10 blades and the stand and all that neat stuff. It'll come and you can get it for a whole, what, $19.99? And I think that also includes the shipping, if I remember correctly. So if you're interested in trying this shaver, uh, but haven't tried it yet, uh, this would be a, probably as about as cheap as you're going to be able to get it. Uh, if you're wanting to give it a try. This uh, one blade core is part of their, I would say their, their three shaver lineup. This one here is plastic with the exception of the metal that's in the handle. Then they have a hybrid where the, uh, the head is metal and then the handle is plastic with the metal in the middle. Then they've got one that's all metal. And I think they've had a few special editions, but uh, for the most of their lineup, that's that's pretty much it of this particular shaver. Has a pivoting head, makes it a little bit easier for 
some that are trying to transition from maybe a cartridge or just starting out. I will say that though that this blade being a thicker blade uh, it's going to give you a different shape feel than what a DE blade would or definitely different than what a cartridge would. But you can see there the, the head does pivot. But uh, for $19.99 or $95 or something like that, basically $20, that's a pretty good price. Give it a try. Especially if you're unsure about it. Outside the fact that for the most part, you can take a, a gem blade that has the spine on it and despine it and use a gem blade, but I don't think most people are going to be interested in doing such a thing. So you're going to be limited to the one and only blade that this was made for. So that is a bit of a drawback. Some people might be able to get more than three shaves out of the blade. I think it has a lot to do with your beard type, mine being kind of thick and tough. Uh, makes it kind of tough on the, on the blade. Like I said, the shave feel will be different because that blade is somewhat thicker than a, a regular DE blade. It is something to keep in mind. And just a little bit of feedback this morning, which, you know, I've been the past three days, um, been using this shaver and every day I've had that kind of feedback. But I will have to say that that, um, that pivoting head makes it a little, little bit easier for being forgiving if your technique is a little bit off as opposed to using one with, with a fixed head. Comparison to, let's say, some other single edge shavers that might be considered on the I guess you might say modern day. I don't have a, um, a mongoose. That's what I was thinking of. I don't have one mongoose. I do have the uh, single edge that uh, Icon used to put out. I got the cap and base plate. I got my own handle. And uh, then there's the Razor Rock Hawk. That it's a single edge, but it uses a different blade. And as well as like a... Uh, Razor Rock's uh, Echo, Eco, I'm sorry, Eco, I'll get it straight. <laughs> There's a number of modern single edge shavers as well as uh, Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements that uses uh, a uh, regular gem blade. Uh, name of that one there if I remember right, Starling. And it comes with, uh, a, I think, a total of four base plates. I guess you might say to meet your shaving needs, if you will. There's a number of them that are out there. Some with pivoting heads, some without. You got the Focus Dynamic that uses half of a DE blade. Uh, it's got a pivoting head. That one there, more or less kind of like this one here. Most of these I usually use this way, even if they do have a pivoting head. I do kind of try to treat it as if it does not pivot. Trying to make sure that I don't get spoiled with the pivoting head. <laughs> kind of mess up my technique, if you will. What I've learned over time. Um, as it goes for the uh, St. Louis trip. my, um, my Our trip went rather well. Uh, we drove to St. Louis. And... Uh, the trip there and back, you know, of course, there's construction along the way. Outside that, it was rather smooth. Uh, it's about a six-hour drive, roughly. And the uh, the band, there were 60 bands to start out with, with this competition. St. Louis is referred to as the Super Regionals. And the uh, there were 60 bands. And... 
our uh, town, Broken Arrow, the band uh, was in what they were referred to as the 4A class. It goes 1 through 4, as goes for the classes. And it was in the 4A class. And uh, in that class, it took top honors in that class, as well as overall in the competition. Started out with 60, they narrowed it down to 14 for the finals. Uh, the competition started on Friday. It ended on Sunday morning at 1 o'clock. <laughs> it, uh, it was quite an event. The 14 finalists of those bands were, uh, they had them all at the end line up on the, uh, on the field. And the colors, you know, go up from all the different bands and everything, their uniforms. It was just a, I guess you might say, a sight to see. It was pretty awesome. But they, uh, they did take not only uh, top honors in the 4A, but also overall the grand, grand champions is what they referred to it as. It was, um, it was really something to see if you've never been to a marching band type competition like this. It's, uh, it is something. The bands, uh, I think there was a total of 14 states represented there in St. Louis. I guess you might say as far south as Texas and as far north as Minnesota. Uh, there were quite a few, like I say, 60 bands, that's, all, that's a lot. It was busy in downtown St. Louis, I'm telling you. Our, um, I think our band number-wise may have been one of the larger ones. I think total with the color guard, I think it's uh, right around the 170 mark, if I remember right. That's a lot of kids. For That's just for one band. The name of their program was uh, Yeehaw. Being representative of Oklahoma, in other words, they thought that that would be the program for this year. It was it was pretty nice. They they did a really nice job. Program was very much upbeat. Um, they also, uh, as it goes for what the the shoes that they wore marching in, they did wear cowboy boots. They had a performance from a um, university, and um, uh, they did have uh, one person out there uh, that was uh, twirling batons, and at one towards the end, this lady she had three of them that she was twirling. Of course, you know both ends were lit with fire. It was uh, it was a sight to see. She was really good. Where it took place downtown St. Louis was uh, the dome at the convention center. I think that's how they refer to it as. And the hotel, when we were booking this hotel, this is our first experience, you know, dealing with. Uh, going to a super regional, so we didn't really know what to expect when we started the book. Some of those hotels that were very close to the event were already filled for that for that time period we were looking for. So I was hunting for a uh, hotel that wasn't too terribly far away, not knowing anything about St. Louis, I'd never been there. And uh, so the hotel we stayed in, <laughs> the name of it was called The Last Hotel. And it was kind of sort of the last hotel that we were looking at downtown when we found it. And it was, uh, I think it just opened in August, July or August. And it just opened. So what they had done is they had remodeled a uh, 
old factory, shoe factory that was down downtown. Part of it was the factory, part of it was the actual, the actual retail from many years ago. And uh, they remodeled this old shoe factory. I guess you would say it was a, the front of it being kept original looked very nice. I mean, even over the years, still a very nice building. Even on the outside, it was a, it was a great looking building. And on the inside, that kept the, I guess you might say, a lot of the time period that the building was built, a lot of the inside was kept that way, in my opinion, about as much as one could and with some modern taste to it, if you will. And uh, I didn't realize at the time how nice the uh, the hotel was going to be. I mean, ba based on the price, it was not uh, did not give you the impression that this was going to be this kind of hotel. I was expecting, I guess you might say, a nice hotel, but kind of along your basic line, if you will, of um, for instance, the what I'm getting at. Is typically, you know, we're used to the hotels where we stay. You, uh, when you need a, uh, some ice, you grab your plastic bucket that's usually in the room, and you run down to the ice machine at the end of the hall, and you get your ice. Well, the way this hotel was made and designed, and the way it was set up, if you want any ice, you had to call for the room service to bring it up to you. They had uh, three different kind of restaurants there in the building. And one of them in particular was upstairs on the roof. I mean, this is a really nice hotel. But for the price that we paid, uh, you would not have indicated that this hotel was like that. Just a just great experience all the way around. About the only thing that I was unprepared for, being from Oklahoma, you know, and so on and so forth, I did not quite grasp what the website was saying when it comes to parking. This is parking available. Oh, well, cool. You know, so there's a place to park when we get to the hotel. Parking available meaning that there's a parking lot over there that you can pay for parking. There's a parking over there, so on and so forth. They didn't actually have a parking lot. They did have valet there that would take your car to a lot and you could pay, you know, by the day, which was not cheap by my means. <laughs> so anyway, that was a, a little bit of a surprise. They did have a few parking meters out on the street, but you can imagine uh, the competition for those parking meters was pretty stiff <laughs> trying to get to one. But it was a lot of fun. We, uh, um, so we, during the uh, Sunday event, the last day of the event, Saturday I should say, um, so the first part, you know, where they're finishing up the, the preliminaries and, and at 4.30 they clear the stadium and they start back up, I think it was this night, 7 o'clock. So instead of moving the car, which was downtown, trying to fight, you know, for another parking spot, we stayed there and we walked about a half a mile to go find a restaurant because, you know, everybody is doing the same thing, walking to a restaurant downtown trying to find a place to eat. <laughs> and get back in time for the finals. We did uh, <laughs> we did find a place downtown, which was really nice. I mean, in that uh, the prices were more than reasonable, especially for being downtown St. Louis. The weather was nice. Um, it just sprinkled just a little bit on us, just a tiny bit. Nothing, you know, no major rain or anything like that. Even though that there was, uh, uh, I guess you might say, a warning that was put out about the uh, Mississippi River that might try to flood on you. Didn't impact us where we were at or anything like that. Uh, it was just getting just over the, the flood stage. I think the flood stage was, I think they said it's like 29 and a half feet. And it was, stay, it was uh, expected to crest at 30.5, something like that. No, it was just over the, the flood stage there. But we weren't near the Mississippi River for it, the, that to impact us. But one of the things that was pretty interesting about the, uh, about the trip is we knew we were close to uh, the state line in between Missouri and Illinois. 
and um, we did end up we, we, we had talked about it just a little bit we had talked about a uh, you know going across the state line just so you could say that we had been to Illinois also well we were looking for a place to eat and with everything that was going down going on in downtown st. Louis the uh, I think I'm going to use a little bit more of this this is awesome stuff I really like this yeah. Um so uh, when it came Saturday morning when we were looking for a place to eat everything that was going on there was a lot of parking that was not available because of all the stuff that was going on in st. Louis downtown in other words it was not just the uh, the bands of course you know that were having an event down there there's a lot of other stuff going on too and so the parking was seriously limited downtown and um, we could find a restaurant that we picked out that we was going to go eat at but you couldn't find a place to park that was remotely close so we decided you know to you know pick another place and so we went to we went there and uh, then after we got there and ate we realized that we were no longer in Missouri we actually went over to Illinois to eat so we we got that accomplished without even really trying real hard but anyway we had a great time there on a little bit of a sad note though um, we did have a uh, band member that uh, her dad and grandmother were traveling to St. Louis to see her perform and uh, what ended up happening is that they uh, were involved in a car accident and they died uh, so that was a, a bit of a I guess you might say a sad note but overall the everything went pretty well once again show you what this looks like this is one blade core like I said all this is plastic with the exception of the metal that's in the handle right here the head does pivot I, when I first got this it was relatively new I got it used and um, it's doing pretty good the one thing I would have to point out is right here what I'm going to call stop hooks these little stops here are made out of plastic so when you're inserting uh, this blade for the first time uh, just take it very slow and easy and it'll kind of click when you put it in there the um, what your I guess you might see there is the risk which I experienced is that if you push too hard and don't play pay close attention when you push put this blade in it'll take the tops off these stops hooks right here and it'll shave it right on off <laughs> so uh, you will have to be kind of careful that that's a uh, something that's the reason why I think the hybrid if you're looking for a, a shaver that's longevity for the longevity and you enjoy these kind of blades and the shaver I think the hybrid would be uh, something that you might want to look at won't be no $20 that's for sure uh, the, the normal going price for this one here I think is 50 bucks 50 60 something like that I can't remember what the going price is uh, normally without it not being on sale the hybrid I think sells for 200 and I think the all-metal one the Genesis or whatever it's referred to is uh, running at $400 in other words not a cheap shaver by any means so getting the experience for this one here for 20 bucks uh, uh, definitely you know might be worth somebody's time if you're interested in something like this uh, for me um, I don't I like this shaver it works well for me it may not work for everybody because of this blade it does have a different shave feel but for my beard type uh, it does slice through the beard type just quite all right uh, but like I said this the third shave is not quite as smooth of course as the first or the second be honest with you the second shave with uh, this blade is better than the first in my opinion it's just one of those things usually with a sh with a blade sometimes the second shave with the blade is might be a little bit smoother than the first especially if it's very sharp and a little bit on the edgy side then of course you know then the second one's smoother it's kind of like uh, the same effect of uh, corking your blade if you will <laughs> taking some of the edginess off but for me it's a really nice shape I don't know yeah, a little bit more stinging over here than normal you know when you use an allen block or something like that you know you usually get a little bit of stinging just like stinging or something like that I uh, had quite a bit over here so I don't know if I got the angle off a little bit or not but anyway all in all it's just a great shave went on a little long this morning things are getting a little bit closer to being normal it will be until the end of December until a lot of the uh, band activities slow down like for instance uh, 
just last night they had another concert for everybody here locally in the town to come to the PAC to listen to them uh, play but it's um, still kind of busy but it's starting to slow down a little bit now since uh, that competition has uh, taken place and is over with. They still got at least two more competitions I can think of that they're going to as well as then they got district play that they are in so Anyway, still very busy. Hope everybody's doing well. Stay safe and smooth shaves to you.